Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and violin tutor. So since it has been several years since I released my original violin lessons 1 to 10, which are now beginning to look a little bit dated, I thought it would be a really good time to revisit and release new and up-to-date videos using the latest technology available to me. As well as updating all of the free PDF sheets from the original lessons, I've written a songbook one that will accompany these lessons. Once you've finished lesson 10, I then encourage you to have a go at this songbook, which contains 10 well-known classical and original pieces, which is going to help you practice and reaffirm the knowledge and skills gained from video lessons 1 to 10. What's great about this book is that instead of hunting all over the internet trying to find suitable pieces to play for your current level, only to find pieces that you like but are too hard, this is where the songbook one comes in, as it will not only contain pieces you'll be able to manage, but each piece comes complete with its own separate video performance and tutorial where I will help you through the piece. So let's get started with the new violin lessons one to 10 and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so in lesson four, this is gonna be how and where to bow. So you know that the violin's gonna be out to the side between say 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. I'm just gonna turn myself slightly diagonal just so you can see me better. So the violin is gonna be held here and I'm not gonna be worrying about what exactly I'm gonna be playing on the violin at the moment, but we're just gonna be talking about where we're gonna bow. So basically we're gonna be bowing between the bridge and the fingerboard and mostly not sort of, not quite in the middle, but maybe further, slightly further towards the fingerboard, somewhere between the middle towards the fingerboard. So you don't want to be bowing on the fingerboard because that'll just sound awful. And you certainly do not want to be bowing on the bridge because that will sound like like fingernails down a blackboard kind of sound. So you want to be kind of bowing somewhere sort of in the middle, maybe towards sort of middle, towards the fingerboard, but not quite on the fingerboard. That's where you want to be bowing. And the aim of the game is to try and keep the bow straight. <laughs> I'm keeping the bow straight here. Now for me, I've been playing for about 30 odd years, so I know exactly where I need to bow and where my arm needs to go. Okay, so I've just moved the camera back a little bit so you can see me a bit more. Now, if you notice, if I face completely to the side, you will see that when I bow, my bow arm is completely straight. It does not go out the back. If you go out the back, then you will literally be bowing on the on the diagonal and it'll just look like you're cutting a piece of wood. We're not sawing a piece of wood, we're trying to play the violin. So you wanna just make sure when you're bowing, you can see that I'm actually just bowing from the elbow. I'm not bowing from the top of the shoulder here, just simply from the elbow. And whilst you're doing that, you wanna try and keep the violin straight as well. Basically, if you bow from the elbow and don't let your arm move about, you can bring this arm forward, you just cannot bring this back, you cannot bring this back any further. So imagine that you've got your back against a back wall, you can't bring your arm back anymore. So you'll find that if you do that and keep your bow arm in line with your body, that your bow will pretty much be straight anyway. <laughs> you might find that practicing in front of the mirror is going to help that as well. I mean, you don't need to get too stressed out and too bogged down with, with all this trying to bow straight because you're going to have a lot of other things to contend with, especially when you start looking at the music, especially when you start bowing on different strings, especially when you start adding the first finger. Everything will kind of all come to play, but these are things that you should be aware of and these are things that you should be knowing about so that when perhaps you do sound a little bit scratchy, that's going to be the reason why. So remember that you wanna be bowing here, right in, sort of in the middle, maybe a little bit towards the fingerboard. Now, if it's scratchy, it's probably gonna be scratchy for a couple of reasons. One, you might be bowing into the fingerboard without even realizing it. You might be bowing probably too close to the bridge, which is probably another reason. And the other reason is hitting other strings. So what you could do at this point is practice isolating those strings. Now, your arm needs to be at certain levels so that it hits the string. So if I want to play the E string, my arm needs to be here. If I want to play the A string, it needs to be exactly here. So can you see I'm sort of just lifting it up. If I want to play the D, it's got to be here. If I want to play the G, it's got to be there. And that is where it's got to be. So you can imagine your arm like an elevator. 
going up between the floors. So if you're stopping at if you're stopping at the first floor or the second floor, which is the G string, if you're stopping at the G string floor, the elevator's going to stop here. If the elevator stops sort of halfway between floor G and floor D, for example, then that's where that's where you're going to be hitting that's when you're going to be hitting the other strings and that's where it's not going to sound good. So you need to make sure that you know exactly where you're going to be. So for the E string, I know I'm going to be here. For the A string, I'm going to be here. For the D string, I'm going to be here. And for the G string, I know I'm going to be here. So that's something you have to practice as well. So when you're hitting other strings, it's probably because your arm is 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 too relaxed and, and you're not really thinking about where, where your bow is going to be. So it seems like you're actually quite, quite rigid when you're holding it, when you're holding the violin out, your arm is going to be out. You don't want to be bowing like... When you start bowing with your arm down against your body, that's when you're going to hit other strings and your, your arm's doing this. So, you know, you do need to be quite nice and and out when you see violinists play they're kind of they everything is nice and open they're all out they're not kind of hunched up like this because you're not going to get very good sound like that so just make sure that your arm is straight so so can you see my arm is moving in exactly it's moving in exactly the place it needs to move and it's stopping at those dedicated floors. The elevator is stopping at those dedicated floors. It's not stopping halfway in between because then I'm going to be hitting double strings and, and two strings and, you know, it's going to sound really scratchy. But you know what? It's going to sound scratchy to start with and that's absolutely fine. You know, if, if you're scratchy after a week, that's fine. It's going to be scratchy for a really long time. The violin is a very difficult instrument, I'm not going to lie, but it's also one of the most beautiful instruments and, you know, the reason why I play the violin because I like it so much. If it was that easy, everybody would be playing the violin, but it does pay off eventually. So in a couple of weeks, you still might be scratchy, but less scratchy than you were when you started when you started out. If you are still scratching in nine months to a year, there is definitely something wrong, but I can pretty much guarantee you that you won't be scratching so much after a few weeks. But if you are, it's either because you are bowing too close to the fingerboard or too close to the bridge, and more than likely your, your arm isn't where it needs to be. So you can see that literally, my arm is not stopping at any other place than those dedicated stops that the elevator stops at. So that is a little bit on, on how and where to bow. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in lesson five where we're gonna be going on to playing the open strings.